So I was working as a porter in the bakery department of a large grocery store before the great isolation hit. I didn't experience much of the isolation because I was considered essential personnel. Like many others, I had no fear. However, in time, being exposed to those who were afraid, it began to affect me. I relapsed into smoking black and miles after having quit for nearly 13 years. And I did that just one month prior to the Rona hit, hitting. So my confidence began to break down and that this plague had not come from me. Many people were falling out all around me and on the job, Two employees fell out before me, and I had to assist with lifting them up off the floor or sitting them upright. And I had developed a wheeze, and come to find out this thing was attacking the lungs, I was like, man, I'm in trouble. But still, I didn't have no fear. But only two months prior to that, the virus hitting, I had delivered unto an immediate supervisor whom I was close to and a few other co-workers who had ears to hear. I had informed them of the King Alfred plan and its revision called Rex 84. And I handed out a few hard copies of the UN Agenda 21, conspiracy theory version. I explained how that info came out during a congressional hearing called the Iran-Contra affair and a Colonel Oliver North questioning in that session. There were those who received it and those who asked, what good is the information if we can't stop this stuff from happening? And those who became very afraid. When I saw the fear, I stopped disseminating the information. People in general often ask, why are things happening? Why? Why? Lord, why? But when you began to show them why, they say, don't speak so harshly to us, but speak softly with smooth words to me or to us. Well, I don't know how to tell the truth without the truth being taken as harsh, cold, or calculated. So again, I back down and I just... Let people live their truth, even though their truth is a lie. My motto became, live and let live, or live and let die, whatever. Because you, you can't save every, everybody. I'm not a savior. I just present information. But when that virus hit, I looked in the eyes of those who did receive the information. And I saw confirmational returns and acknowledgments and when that presidential state of a national emergency was issued I was like okay stage one confirmed then I saw the National Guards being called up and heard of militias of white nationalists springing up all over the place I said okay that goes stage two here we go. Then I heard the presidential order go out on national TV telling his boys, stand back and stand by. It was then I heavily armed myself for stage three, which came, which came close to happening and a complete fulfillment. But instead, an armed insurgents took place at the Capitol. At the same time, isolation orders had already been in place. I soon quit my job October 2020, later that year, or in that year. And I was sleeping during the day and staying vigilant throughout the night. There was too much chatter online about doing this and doing that and people prepping for this and prepping that for that and I was already prepped I was like I have seen this picture before written in the Bible 
and someone has our prophetic a prophecy playbook and they are running this prophetic word play by play only on a smaller scale than that described I had made up in my mind that I was going to go out in a blaze of glory and not allow anyone to force anything upon me or into me or against my will or the will of I am me no violations was whatsoever was going to be tolerated it was going to be dealt with I jimmied my doors I set up traps and I hope like hell my personal movements didn't set off any of the traps that I had set but the picture painted second Edras, Ezra's revelations was frighteningly similar to the times of our days I was sure that this is it even though his visuals were more intense the one thing I knew is that this episode we have experienced is only the tip of the iceberg and that what lies beneath the surface is so much greater than our recent experience that it pales in comparison but all is in line with prophetic scripture or words of our records isolation doesn't really bother me much I pretty much live like a hermit already as long as I have access to the internet and others online here my social life gets fulfilled however I have been without even those often for months at a time due to power outages or cell phone disruptions and both those days I felt isolated but still without fear or severe need to be near anyone or longing to hear someone else's voice or longing to go and visit someone in another city I was cool right here where I am I felt safe I felt secure I was ready for anything that came my way I am never really totally alone because the voice of the of my inner power is always speaking to me I just have to be quiet and listen he's funny he makes jokes and he entertains me people I feel should not fear me for not accepting what they have accepted in fear if that makes any sense I'm more afraid of the people who have accepted stuff in fear than they should be afraid of me I am more apprehensive of being around them as I don't know what the effects of self-replicating DNA strands in them will cause them to feel act or do in respects or regards towards me I find peace in isolation I find chaos among my peers I love peace the closeness to my inner power outweighs my needs for the comfort of a female or another peer this may appear strange to some but it is what it is I am very much accustomed to working within group settings however I prefer solitude when the need for group relations is not absolutely necessary I have been celibate for going on 12 years now the urge for companionship only comes in spurts and they leave fairly quickly I had one severe episode like a power or a passion during my uh, birth month or birth moon moon of my birth or born day and it was an intense power surge like I've never felt before 
That scared me. That scared me. Shalom wa alaikum. Wa ya baraka ka. Ya ha wa. Ba ya sha maraka. Amen.